Look at that, friends. Do you know what this means? I don't know what it means either, but it looks nice, doesn't it? It's the sometimes vlog. It's a vlog that happens sometimes. Now, normally, I scream it's the sometimes vlog a lot louder and with more gusto. But there's a guy taking a nap right there. He's taking 40 winks, relaxing on the grass under that little pine tree. And I didn't really want to scream it's the sometimes vlog to him. Also, these people here are on a date. They're going fishing, which is, I don't know, maybe that's a good date, I'm not sure. I'm a little rusty, but look at this. That, my friends, right here, not here, here is the Queen Mary, a huge 1930s ocean liner that was once, yes, once owned by Disney. Not just Disney specifically, but also Disneyland kinda. It was sort of tied into Disneyland for a while. And I will tell you all about that another time. Actually, today, Tyler and I thought we were gonna be on the Queen Mary right there. <laughs> Filming Random Land, we were supposed to do it with Jeff Heinbach, who told us the appropriate date, which is next week. But we thought it was this week. So we were making all these plans to go there today. Woke up this morning, went, oh, whoops, wrong day. So I decided that I would come to Long Beach, California anyways. Look at this beautiful, Scenery, <laughs> because I am a member of the Aquarium of the Pacific over here. I have a little membership that I decided I'm gonna come down and hang out at the aquarium. Tyler decided that if we weren't gonna film, he was not gonna leave the house because Tyler has an aversion to putting on pants for no reason, as he puts it. Look at this, you see this? There's the lighthouse right here, down here on the peach. Shoreline Village is just down that way. The aquarium over here, this is where they go off for all the whale watching, all the stuff. You can see this bridge over here that goes to the Queen Mary. This bridge is actually pretty awesome because it's a filming location for something that I love very much. The movie, the first movie, never the second movie, but the first Anchorman movie. So when Ron is on the bridge and Jack Black punts Baxter off of the bridge, that is the bridge right here in Long Beach, Ron Burgundy, right there on the bridge. Oh, this burrito is delicious, but it is filling. Right, Punts Baxter, right off that bridge here in Long Beach, because Anchorman, even though it was set in San Diego, was all filmed in and around Los Angeles. Long Beach is at the tail, bottom end of Los Angeles, still in Los Angeles County, so Long Beach is sort of its own separate entity. But also, you could technically probably get away with saying that Long Beach is part of LA. Look at this, see this lighthouse here? This was another filming location for Anchorman. Speaking of Anchorman, doesn't this guy kind of look like Vince Vaughn in the plaid shirt? Maybe, no? Okay, that's cool. Don't worry about it. Right here in the movie Anchorman, just away from the lighthouse, right here where this path splits apart here, they parked the two, or the news van for the competing news team, and Vince Vaughn was right here talking to the Channel 4 news team, Ron Burgundy and his team, the two teams met. They were talking smack on each other. And this is basically, right around this area was the spot where they said, I'm gonna take your mother Dorothy Mantooth out for a nice steak dinner and never call her again. Dorothy Mantooth is a saint! Dorothy Mantooth is a saint, you hear me? Right here, right in this little area with the lighthouse just barely obscured from view. And just off to the side would have been the Queen Mary, although I'm not 100% sure you can see the Queen Mary in that shot. That shot was filmed right here. Also, in downtown Long Beach, just over yonder, you can't really see it. It's a very circular building, which apparently was also used in the movie Die Hard. And they land the helicopter and some of the opening scenes from Anchorman in front of that. So a bunch of Long Beach shots in the movie Anchorman. So if you didn't know before, now you know, right there. Dorothy Mantooth is a saint. Dorothy Mantooth is a saint. There should be a t-shirt that just says Dorothy Mantooth is a saint. I would wear that t-shirt. Anyway, so I'm just all by my lonesome. Adam the Woo, of course, is moving into his new home, which is only about 10 minutes from my home. We live in a little triangle near Disneyland, so we're all 10 minutes apart from each other now, 10 to 20 minutes, depending on traffic. Southern California, you don't measure anything in distance. You measure everything in time. So how far is it? About 10 minutes, 40 minutes in traffic. That's how we measure distance. There would be no way of telling how many miles. For example, I live in Anaheim Hills at the moment. 
from the top of where I live, I can see downtown LA. I can see it. But to get there in a car, most of the time, would take me well over an hour. So that's how we measure every, excuse me, that's how we measure distance. It's probably only like 30 miles or so, maybe 20 miles, 20 to 30 miles. I don't know, you'll probably Google map it and tell me how wrong I am. But it would take a lot longer to get there than you would think. Look at these people. They're all enjoying the day. Do you hear that sound? That is the Lorikeet Forest here at the Aquarium of the Pacific in Long Beach. I don't know if any of you follow me on Snapchat, which at the moment my Snapchat name is LiftFastDiePoor. All one word, all lowercase, no spaces. But I think I was Snapchatting some pictures the other day of being at the aquarium. I Snapchatted, I snapped, I snapped, I took a picture of my picture on my membership card, which is pretty cool because I was doing this. They were like, just stand up against the wall and smile. I was like, nah, I think this is the ticket. So it's quite literally now the ticket because that's what gains me entry. Look at this, this is gorgeous. I want this to be where I live, inside of a fake jungle. I don't even know where I was going with that. Anyway, so I'm just down here cruising along by myself, about to take a look at some fish. A little bit earlier, I stopped at the Pacific Islander Ethnic Art Museum, which I barely knew existed here in Long Beach. It turns out it's a really tiny little box-shaped building. It's $5 to get in. The permanent exhibits were actually mostly gone today. There was a bunch of modern exhibits, like uh, Vogue magazine cut up into weaves, and Polynesian stuff. But it was still a pretty cool little place. It was only five bucks. I recommend stopping by if you have time. I was thinking about filming Random Land. I'm not Random Land there. I'm not sure that it's honestly big enough. It's a very, 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 very tiny place. But perhaps the next time I go, we'll do a some Tom's vlog. I'm one of those weird people. You know, I, if I like the book Tom Sawyer, I then have to learn everything about Mark Twain, and then I have to learn everything about the context of his time so I can understand it better, and then I have to read everything and read everything. It's the same thing with the tiki stuff. It starts with like, I really like the tiki room. I really like, you know, Adventureland. Oh, what is this tiki stuff? Let me look into Polynesia. Let me look into this. Well, first all the tiki pop stuff, oceanic arts and all that, and then I have to get down the rabbit hole and look up actual Polynesian art, actual tiki stuff, learn about the Marshall Islands and the Marquesas, Easter Island, Samoa, Tonga. Actually, very fascinating. Polynesia. Polynesians are sort of the last link in the expansion of humanity from Africa all over the world, settling the globe. They're sort of the last great human migration expanders. I'm going to pull out my membership card, go inside of this aquarium, and say, like, look at this young seagull here. Look at this young buck. What a handsome coat. What a handsome coat you have there. What a handsome coat. Did you just defecate? Did you just defecate, Mr. Seagull? I think he did. Anyway, so all about my lonesome, but that's never a bad thing. A lot of people get super bummed out when they have to be by themselves. You know what? If you can't live with yourself, you'll have to get another apartment. So it's good to be cool with yourself. Hang out with yourself. Maybe go to an aquarium. Treat yourself. Treat yourself 2015. So I'm out continuing the quest for positivity. Look at, there's a clown down there. Let's go investigate this. Let's go investigate this. So I'm out on the quest for positivity. I'm gonna go see some fish. Those will be on Snapchat. Like I said, live fast, I pour. Or the at live fast, I pour. Instagram. Or Instagram at Justin Scarb, which is me. Twitter also at live fast, I pour. Or at Justin Scarb, which is me. So a lot of social media going on. Facebook. Yeah. We have the Facebook page, live fast, I pour. That's what I recommend. Look at, there's a clown here. A clown. Hello. How are you doing? How are you? There's a clown here, right on the water. I was not expecting a clown. I was seeing boats and seagulls and fish. Clown, look at that. You're very talented. I possess little to no talent, specifically when it comes to balloons. Not very much talent. Although I did build a little tiki shelf last night. I did put a new painting on eBay of Patchy the seagull. He's a seagull with a peg leg and an eye patch. He wanders the seas. He's traveled all throughout Polynesia extensively and Long Beach. He's quite a wanderer, Apache. And now he's wandering onto eBay and potentially wandering into your home. So go check that out if you want. I think I posted the link on the Lift I Pour Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash Lift I Pour. I am going to go in to the Aquarium of the Pacific. Would you like to come with me? Let's see if we can get you 
into the aquarium. Oh, do you know what? I put my card in my pocket. Let's see what we can do. The aquarium is closing today at six. Okay, here's one of those awkward moments where you're filming, but you don't want to be filming. I wish it was edited. You just skip forward in time. Hold on, it's right here in my pocket. Da -da -da -da. There we go, there's the membership. Thank you. Oh, you can't see the picture. I'll Snapchat you the picture. It's pretty good. Oh no, one of the exhibits is closed. One of the exhibits is closed over here. You can touch jellyfish. I wonder if there's a long line to touch jellyfish. Let's go look. Let's see if there's a long line to touch jellyfish. So anyway, the original plan was to go to the Queen Mary today. That's why yesterday I said, we're going to go somewhere super cool today. Turns out you and I are going somewhere super cool today. After all, it's just not the Queen Mary like I expected. So this is the deep water exhibit. Something I really like about this exhibit is they have some sort of dead whale or narwhal. Not 100% sure if that's a model or an actual dead whale. It's probably a, a facsimile of a dead whale. And look at all the creatures munching on the dead oh, look stuff. That. Look at this big fish. Does anybody know what kind of fish that is? I have absolutely no idea. I will tell you though, the giant spider crab, which apparently loves to feast on dead things. See, I got a claw, just like they have a claw. Is maybe one of the creepiest animals on the earth. All these like weird little fuzzy, spiky crabs. This is pretty much my nightmare. Being deep, deep under the water, being picked apart alive by creepy shrimp and giant Spider crabs. Okay, so the line is too long. We're not gonna stay in the line. Oh my gosh. I want that woman's pants. She has amazing pants. Beetlejuice slash Sweeney Todd pants are pretty much my life goal. You can never find men's pants that are stripy like that. So if you do find some, tweet me or something. I need to know about the striped pants. Look at this. Those in there are moon jellies. And you can actually touch the jellyfish. They're so weird. They sort of feel well, never mind what they sort of feel like. They feel very cool. They feel like jellyfish. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so here we are. So I guess I'm really not alone because you guys are always with me. Look at these people. Now, I wonder if these people are unaware of the fact that this exhibit is undergoing renovation or they're just really excited about the renovation. I don't think that guy's too excited. He keeps leaning over like he's falling asleep. He's taking a nap. Let's take a look at the map. nap time. We started with a nap. That would have been a great place to end it. We could have bookended it with naps, so we're not going to do that. We're going to keep walking. I can show you more of the beautiful aquarium of the Pacific because we didn't get to touch the jellyfish. That exhibit was closed. Look at this giant blue whale. This thing is massive. It's crazy to me that these things actually exist, that this isn't just some huge model. This is totally random, but I wish they had a Star Wars museum with a Star Destroyer this size hanging up inside of it. I would nerd out. Look at all these people enjoying a meal. That's not a meal. I don't know what he's doing. Some sort of science. Okay, let's go upstairs. The best exhibit of all. The best exhibit of all, in my humble opinion. Well, I don't know about best, actually, because like I said, they have the lorikeet forest, which is little parrots. They land on you, they drink the nectar. They also now, pretty new, I think, just this past year they added, or past couple years, they added penguins. So they have penguins outside. Oh, my old enemy, stairs. That part is pretty cool, but my, so I don't know, that might be the coolest part, but my favorite part of the aquarium is the tropical Pacific. This entire museum is basically devoted to the Pacific Ocean. It's the aquarium of the Pacific. So you have the Northern Pacific, you have down around by Baja, Southern California. Down below you have the deep ocean. Outside you have sea lions and uh, sea otters. There's puffins somewhere in here. We have penguins from way down in the Pacific Ocean. Uh, yes, anyway. But this area is all the Polynesian areas. So it's sort of fitting in with the theme of today. Look at these strange Micronesian, tiki almost looking things. All of this tropical area, the coral reefs and all that stuff. So all the good Nemo fish are right over here inside of the tropical Pacific area. So let's go take a look at this. I could and do quite literally sit here sometimes 
for long periods of time. They're staring at me. They're concerned because they think I'm talking to myself. They think I've gone slightly insane. I love this. This is supposed to be sort of like a lagoon display. So some sort of island, coral island lagoon. You can see there's all kinds of little blue tanks swimming around. Well, in that shot you can see them, but over here you can see them. Blue tangs, of course, would be, well, I don't know if they're actually blue, I think they're called palette tangs, are better known to all of these small children as dories. Look at all the dories. See them? Oh no, there's one right over there. Not these little blue ones, the big blue ones. Come on, dory, where are you? Don't be so forgetful. Don't forget about the sun. Okay, hold on, one of them will come along shortly. You're making me look silly, Dory. Up, 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 up. Up there, you see some rays. Oh, there you go. There's some Dories up there. You see them? It's actually kind of... Hello. It's probably annoying for you that millions of people come by every five seconds. They're like, Dory, Nemo. But it's actually pretty cute, right? When the little kids are like, Nemo, Dory. You should know what to say. But she's definitely concerned. So because of the popularity of Finding Nemo, and Nemo, and Dory, they have an entire display of clownfish right here. Anemone, anemone fish, anemone fish. Look at them, millions of them. So for all the children who just want to come to the aquarium to see Nemo, Nemo, I have to see Nemo. They have an entire tank, all kinds of Nemos, Nemos. You know, it would probably take you a long time to sit here and look at all these fish and find them with a little fin. I don't think I have time for that. Do you? But they also put some palette tangs in there. So there's Dory. So forgetful. Which one's Marlin? And isn't it weird that Marlin is a bigger type of fish, but that little clownfish's name is Marlin? You know, for a clownfish, he's not all that funny. Look at these guys. I'm gonna just slam the iPhone right against the thing so you can get a really good look at these fish. How's that going? Am I muted? Am I pretty muffly? These clownfish actually look pretty intrigued and interested in this iPhone. I think they have people that they would like to text. They're probably still living in tropical lagoons. Unfortunately, their friends that they would love to text probably don't have iPhones down in the coral reef. So it would be kind of pointless. Otherwise, I'd chuck my phone right in there for them. Oh, look at this. More live corals and crazy things. Some of the displays here have fake coral. I don't know if we use the word fake. Artificial coral. Look at these guys. Look at these creepy little shrimps. Creepy, creepy little shrimps. These are all the frog displays. Here's all kinds of poisonous frogs. Oh no! He couldn't find Nemo! Here's all the creepy poisonous frogs that native peoples on different islands would stick their little darts into, get the poison, and kill a man! That was very Adam. I've been hanging out with Adam too much. Kill a man! Kill a man! He always does the wiggle fingers. Adam does the wiggle fingers. These are your wiggle fingers, Adam. Look at this. This is pretty good, huh? Kind of reminds me of SeaWorld. How they have those shark exhibits. Only, I don't think there are any big, creepy, great white sharks like this. We do have stingrays. More palette tanks. So once you learn one of those names, you don't forget it. Inside of here, though, there are sea turtles, which is very, very cool. I don't see any sea turtles at the moment. I'm just going to turn you around so you can see as well. I'm trying to spot. Oh, so sad. He needs to see the sea turtle. There's also a big, creepy eel hanging out right there. You see him? It's very hard to point at him because this glass is curved. So I'm pointing actually in the wrong direction so that you can see in the correct direction. Look at that eel right there. Now what's really strange is I'm not 100% you gotta please forgive the crying of the child. I didn't have time to build the log to scale and paint. What's really weird is, I'm not sure if it's because they give them all kinds of special aquarium fish food or what, but wouldn't you think that eel, when one of those fish swims super close to his mouth, would just chomp? Wouldn't you think he would just try to eat the fish? But so far, in all my visits to the aquarium, I don't know whether it's they plan out certain animals or they're all vegetarians, I have never actually seen a fish devour another fish. I have yet to see that. Okay, the big sea turtle is right up here. Check it out. You see him? 
That is pretty stinking cool. I wonder what his name is. You might think, he doesn't have a name. He's a sea turtle, but he does have a name. All of the sea turtles at the Aquarium of the Pacific are very, very well cared for, very much beloved by all of the keepers and the marine biologists here, and they all have names. Once, several years ago now, I was here, as I often am wont to do, wandering around by myself. I think I had one friend with me, and we were over here in the big tank, the big tropical tank, taking a over. Whoa. Do we comment on that? Some kind of vlog is a family show, but these fish are getting sex changes. And there we'll drop the subject. Over here in the big tank, a friend of mine and I were watching the divers that go in. These divers go in periodically and they give a little show and they and they, I think they're all volunteers actually. And they give a little discussion and dialogue. Here's the big tank. To all the kids, and they teach the kids a little bit about marine biology and talk about the aquarium, how they care for some of the animals here. Well, anyways, we noticed that they dropped their ladder down over in this corner, so we were watching them go up. The last diver was a female diver. She was crawling up the ladder, and we were watching her go up the thing, so we could kind of scope out, like, oh, man, how do they get down in those tanks and all this different stuff? Is it is it open daylight up there, or is it a building? We were trying to we were trying to tell, and then she turned around and sort of looked back down at us and it was only then that we realized, oh, she's a female diver in a wetsuit and she might think we were looking at her rear end. So we were a little bit like, oh, whoops, I wasn't looking at your butt, ma'am, I'm sorry. And then a few minutes later, around this corner, blah, 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 with the fins on and everything, comes this very wet diver. <laughs> We thought we were in trouble, like, oh no, here it comes, we're gonna have to explain, I'm sorry, we're looking at you, but it turns out she was like, oh, are you guys curious about what was up there? So she knew what we were looking at. She invited us up there, we actually did get to go up above the tanks, which is actually indoors, spoiler alert, and they were showing us some of the sea turtles that were in isolation tanks, there was one of them that was sick, and she was describing how they take care of the sea turtles, they name the sea turtles, look at these, look at this shark over here. This thing is massive. Like big acrylic or glass or whatever it is. Probably acrylic. Big curved tanks are very weird to stand next to because as you move along they sort of warp. They sort of get the vertigo. Oh, look at that. So I literally come here sometimes for hours and hours. Oh, there's a guitar fish down there. Hours and... Oh, hey. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. I don't think you guys can see that. I literally sit here for hours sometimes and just look into this madness. This part of the coral reef, I know for sure, is all artificial corals. None of these are real. Although, as the divers put it the other day, it's very real to a fish. Because I don't think fish can tell the difference between live coral and fake coral when they don't eat the coral or interact with it too much. Oh, look at these guys. So they're getting fed something and or the divers are about to pop in. Once you see the fish swarm like that, it's usually when some sort of diver comes in or someone's walking around the top of the tank with broccoli. They're constantly throwing broccoli into that tank and the fish munch on the broccoli and get all crazy. So you can see, here's the schedule of when the divers come in. They do a whole program and a whole show. So sometimes they chuck food over here and the divers will come down the ladder over in this corner. Although I don't see the ladder right now. The size of this massive thing. Probably half the size of my body, and I'm over six feet tall, so that's pretty great. Anyway, enough of my jabbering. The Aquarium of the Pacific is pretty fantastic. It's a little pricey, but it is completely worth it. If you get a membership, I think you visit two times, and the membership is sort of pays for itself, you know what I mean? So I went in for the membership, and I come over and over and over again to the aquarium. It's very relaxing. I would love to have a huge saltwater aquarium in my house, but it is very labor intensive. You gotta keep on top of it, water, temperature, and other things. And I feel like I don't quite have the attention span or the financial resources for that at the moment. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty freaking broke. But that's okay. You gotta keep on keeping on. The show must go on. So today's a very calm, peaceful, sometimes vlog wander with you guys for about 20 minutes, a half an hour of hanging out, just you and me together, because nobody else wanted to come. Tyler didn't want to put on pants. He wanted to hang out with you guys, but not enough to put on pants. So that shows you the level of commitment from that guy. Right? Let's go out here and see if we can see some penguins. Let's go see some penguins before we leave. Flightless birds. Just kind of like a pantsless, flightless bird, pantsless Tyler, same thing. Look at this guy, he's got a pretty good hair. I like your haircut. He didn't care. Here's the 
northern Pacific. These people are learning about whales, not at the Walmart or the McDonald's, real whales. Here's where they have the puffins and other North Pacific cold water fish. They don't talk too much about, um, about whales in the museum other than this big area. Sometimes these shades come down and they have this little show about whales, it's pretty cool. So back over here, we go to the California exhibit. <gasps> Here's my favorite thing over here. They have these little garden eels in here. These little, tiny, little worm looking things that come out of the sand. They cook up there. The cutest, weirdest, most alien looking things. I'm gonna show you. I don't wanna be rude and interrupt the viewing. Let's just take a little peek. Look at these. Come on, buddy. Let's go check out some more stuff. Come on. That is the weirdest thing. Look it, look it. You remember Ian finding Nemo when Dory sees the tiny little jellyfish and she's like, you are my squishy, you will be my squishy. That's how I feel about those two. I just want to touch them, but I feel like human hands would probably not be a good thing to touch the garden eel with. Whoa, what's going on out here? I think they're feeding the seals and sea lions. Look at these guys. Look at these guys. These are some happy campers. They are about to get fed. These people are all petting stingrays and guitar fish. The stingrays stingers have been removed so that there are no Steve Irwin situations. Oh, that's really sad. Too soon. As you can see, look at how excited these rays are to get pet. They literally want to get touched. That's crazy. You would think if you were a stingray, you wouldn't want anyone to bother you. But these guys love it. They could be swimming into the middle like, don't touch me, brah. But they're not. All these people are very excited to touch the stingrays. So everybody's happy. Here we go. The June Keys Penguin Habitat. This did not used to be here when I lived in Long Beach several years ago. There were no penguins at the aquarium. Now look at this. Now there are penguins at the aquarium. Previous to this, other than the Monterey Bay Aquarium, the only place I had ever seen penguins was in the St. Louis Zoo. And I probably shouldn't incriminate myself, but in the St. Louis Zoo, which is free, because they built it in the world, it's in Forest Park, so it's where the World's Fair used to be, and all of a sudden, there's a big free zoo. They have this freezing cold penguin building that you can go in, and unlike this one, which is probably a little wiser, the glass is very low, like almost even with the water. So as the penguins swim by, not saying I did, but you could reach over and touch a penguin. Uh, okay, I touched a penguin. They're so soft. I had to tell you that I touched the penguin because I have to tell you the penguins are so soft. You wouldn't expect them to be soft. When they're in the water, they look kind of rubbery. When they're on land, they look kind of a little bit like a wet, like a wet blanket. A blanket you shouldn't get wet, like those fuzzy blankets. You get them wet, and then when they dry, they're kind of crusty feeling. That's what penguins look like. But I'm telling you, they are as soft as a baby goose. I've actually never touched a baby goose, so I'm not sure that I'm allowed to use that analogy, but let's just go with it. Look at that. Penguins. Little, cute, wonderful, amazing penguins. And look, pigeons. Also a type of bird. Completely different uh, situation, but a bird. All right, I can't think of anything else to say. I'm gonna wander around here for a few more minutes and then I'm gonna meet up with Adam the Who? Oh, Adam the Who. Maybe Tyler Evans, rock journalist, I don't know. He really, really just doesn't want to put on pants today, so I'm not 100% sure that's going to happen. But we'll try and see if we can get Tyler at Disneyland tonight, so we're gonna wander around Disneyland and look at the wonderful scenes. Oh yeah, so make sure to go over to our Facebook page. Check out, I'm gonna put some stuff on eBay, little tiki's and paintings and wonderful things, because that's how I make a living, other than with this handsome face right here. That's how I make the living. That's how I eat the money. I mean, eat the money, eat the food. Okay, this is closed right now, the touch pools. I wanted to leave you with the sharks. They got all kinds of little sharks and rays in here in these pools. Let's see if you can even see them. And normally, you're allowed to use two fingers, two fingers, and touch and pet the sharks. But today, they have decided no molesta the sharks. You're gonna let them swim around, be excited. Lots and lots of bamboo sharks in there, which don't really get all that huge. They're very, very friendly. They like to be pet. They mostly just sort of chill in here. You can see they're pretty active, but today is not a day to be touched. They're celebrating, they're having a vacation. We can still look at them, but no touchy, touchy. 
No drinky, drinky, no smoky, smoky. For the bamboo sharks. Okay. Down over here are all the big sharks. But let's just take a pic. Take a pic. Let's take a look. See, I'm losing my mind here. About 30 minutes now we've been hanging out. I've been talking non stuff. Oh, look at this. Easter Island. I love these things. This is what they actually look like, by the way. In Easter Island, they always had these little stone cats. And they had eyes. But over the years, as all of the big moai were knocked down, the eyes popped out. Here's a weird fact that you did absolutely did not need to know. Well, let's go take a look at the big sharks, of which one of them is a sawfish, I think it's called. It's a big long nose with all the little spikes sticking out. It's one of the weirdest things ever. So I'm gonna put you up against the glass, check out the sharks. I'm gonna shut up and leave. So make sure to subscribe for some more Sometimes Vlog. Go check out our teachers, livefastdiepoor.spreadshirt.com. I think the first, right? The sale, the free shipping deal, love pack or love 15. Those are the two codes you get into it. Check out, you get free shipping over $30. And also combine your order if you use your little shopping cart and go over to adamthewoo.spreadshirt.com. You can pick up an Adam shirt and one of our shirts. If you only like one of our shirts, if you only like one of Adam's shirts, you can combine them. Still use the code, still get the free shipping. Today is the last day of that. So I'm going to show you. Look at, see, there's what I'm talking about. Look at the face on him. You see his nose? Would you like that to hit you in the face? I wouldn't. Anyway, subscribe for some more Sometimes Vlog. I've mentioned previously all the social media stuff, so I don't need to repeat myself. Go check it out. Check out the eBay stuff. I'm posting it to the Facebook page. Slash your fast I4. Roller shoes. That's cool. Let's look at sharks. I'm gonna leave. Goodbye now. Instagram. Instagram some more fish. If you love fish. If you don't like fish, you don't have to go to Instagram. I'm gonna shut up. Goodbye. Look, 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 look,